All right. I mean, you guys always know I'm trying to help out people. I mean, he's got more subs than me, but I try and help out people that have like, you know, under 10K, under 100K subs and everything. So this is really the only video I could find on this too. So it's the first look at the new raid, Guild Wars 2, Janther Wilds News. And uh, Greetings, let's just check it out. Gamers. We've got a new blog post from ArenaNet. Uh, we've finally got some new details about the brand new raid wing in the next expansion, Guild Wars 2 Janthea Wilds. Uh, and we've got some more information about convergences as well, since the convergences have been confirmed to be also included in the, this next, ex next expansion. So how are they going to be different and how are they going to be the same compared to the Secrets of the Obscure convergences? Finally getting some more information on that, so let's jump right into it. Here we go, the return of raiding and convergences in Janthea Wilds. We are less than a month away from the launch of uh, the Janthea Wilds expansion. It's creeping up and there's plenty to be excited about. For the August 20 release, players can also look forward to the newest raid and convergences going live in the first major update in November. So again, so this is what's confusing me is, I mean, this video is two months from like, this was two months ago, like when it released, but this is the thing that's like, really, it, it says here that it's, it's coming in November, but when I look online, like anywhere, I don't see anything for it. This is all I see for it. I feel like when there's like a new raid coming into a game, there should be a little bit more talk than what I'm finding. So that's kind of why I'm watching this right now. Convergence is going to be part of the first major update, which is roughly three months after the initial release of Janthea Wilds. So it's not going to be available straight away, um, but it is pretty soon still. It's going to be the first update after the initial release. You'll be able to explore a mysterious mountain so. region as you ascend this when do you guys think it's coming out against opponents who won't go down without a fight players will also get to choose how to encounter these fights either a 50 player convergence or the 10 player raid wing and um, so again if you've been living under a rock this okay so you're able to do this raid as a 50 player as well so it's basically allowing like I can still do this even if I don't have like a, a like a raid group yet like ready right that's basically what it's saying here I'm allowed to do this content in either way so I can do an LFG with a 50 player which is probably like easy mode it's like a world boss or something um and then what is there going to be like maybe the same mechanics or more mechanics if we do it in the 10 player, it's it's got to be harder, right? This is a pretty big deal. First new raid wing in five years, wing eight. Um, so that is pretty exciting. And we've, uh, yeah, we're finally going to get some more information on uh, how that is looking, how it's been cooking. This was, this surprised me a little bit. Our team is currently hard at oh, work developing cooking. this new raid. Um, for some reason, I kind of assumed that they'd probably be almost done with it uh, by this point. It's from what you understand, the new raid is coming from the next content patch, which will be around November. Yeah, that's what this is saying, and that's all I'm finding, really. But I've only found, like, three sources, pretty much. Like, nobody's talking about it, it seems like. It's weird. I feel like it should be much bigger than this. If it's the first one in five years, there should be some talk about it. There should be some content on it. I'm not really seeing anything. No one's talking about it. When this video goes up, I'm going to be the only one really talking about it, probably. It's weird. <laughs> Sounds like they're still kind of right in the thick of it, um, which I suppose makes sense uh, with this new release schedule. It's funny just... It should be huge. This should, should be a huge right deal, now. and it doesn't seem like Initial it is. releases right around the corner. Yeah, they just mentioned they're not going to be able to provide too many details, but we are getting a pretty good first look into how it's going uh, to... There's going to be more chatter now. closer to the release? Dude, we're like less than a month. We're less than a month, and we I, we don't have anything but this still, I think. Like, I think we're too close right now. We should have something. Oh, it compares to convergences. Since they are, you know, both instanced content, what's going to be the difference? The same way with the, the EOD strike. I wasn't well, here for that, so I'm not really sure. Potentially, uh, I believe this is going to be where, where the convergence and the raid takes place. I'm not sure if this is also going to be sort of a part of the open world map or not, um, but it does look kind of similar to the screenshots that we've got so far of the that first map, but it's more mm. mountainy, more mountainous terrain, so perhaps not 
So, in the past, raids were self-contained instances with their own stories built for 10 player groups. Our goal with the upcoming raid is to allow players to experience the story in a way that works best for them. The raid will be integrated into the main storyline and players who might be hesitant to join a raid group will be able to enjoy their own personal narrative. The 50 player nice. version is built as a convergence, similar in structure to those found in the Soto convergences. And those participating in the 10 player raid will find the story to be more heroic with a focus on the formidable enemies they face rather than the NPCs involved in the narrative. So this is sort of our first kind of glimpse into what might the, the difference be between the raid and the convergence. It seems like there is actually going to be a difference other than just the amount of players. Uh, so it says actually the story is going to be more heroic, which is a bit vague, I feel, but... Um, focus on more the enemies rather than a focus on the NPCs um, with the raid. So as many people expected, the raids, it sounds like the raid is going to be a bit harder. Um, and they do reinforce that a bit later. We'll get to that. That's interesting. So they're going to change the way it ends. Why would it? It's going to be more heroic if you do that. I mean, I, I like that. But like, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? It's like more heroic. The stories is like like you're gonna get more of like a like maybe another cutscene or something. Is your gear better? I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. So it definitely looks like the raid is gonna be harder and the convergence is gonna be a little bit easier, a little bit more. Um, you well, know, yeah. Accessible for the newer players. Convergence is gonna be like a world boss. I mean, you'll probably you, you're gonna go down, but as long as you tagged it, you probably you're gonna get credit for it more than likely and while there will be some differences between the 50 player and 10 player vergences the team has recognized the importance of maintaining a sense of continuity between both experiences that, so it's not going to be too different that's just to like keep you let me see the 50 player is pretty much just to like keep you going through the story whatever it might be whatever's going on in that raid it's going to, it, it allows you because it's easier to get through it and then move on. Like if you want to, you don't have to do the hard content or you're not restricted to finding nine other players and hoping that you can get done to progress further in the story. Different, which I think is good. It kind of, you know, makes sense. It's the same encounter pretty much. Just a different the way I get it. That's why I'm it's understanding way of it. experiencing it. Uh, and we look forward to watching how new players discover and master these mechanics in each setting. With the introduction Mucker potatoes will have something. Raid, I'm going to have something to too. Be wondering I'm going to have a lot. Raids <clears throat> in the future. This is definitely something that I've been wondering. I think a lot of people have been definitely wondering this. And the answer is pretty much as I was expecting as well. The short answer is maybe. Um, so raids require a significant amount of development resources, but only a small subset of players engage with the 10-player group instance content which is part of the reason that it's been five years since our last one. So this is, I don't know if they've ever, if they've ever publicly said this, but this was kind of what everyone assumed. Um, so the, the new raid serves as a test to see how. It sounds like they are prepared to make another one and continue making more raids. Uh, if it does well, if it's sounding like it, like, they're going to throw this one out there, and if it doesn't do good, they're not going to mess with it anymore. That's like what I'm gathering from what they're saying here. They're pretty much like, if you guys like this, try it. Like now. Because if you don't, we're not making it anymore. How we can support raids moving forward. So basically, they are going to see how this goes. And if it goes really well, everyone everyone likes it, and it seems to be a good, um, good path, then it seems like it is pretty possible that we will continue to get raids going forward. But yeah, if I, I suppose if everyone hates it or, or for whatever reason it just doesn't work, then um, it seems like it's not impossible that this will actually be the last one. So it's pretty much just mm -hmm. we'll see how uh, the raid goes and then we might finally get an answer for if we're going to continue getting the raids or not. Originally, we attempted to solve the, cro the cost problem with raids through strike missions, uh, which was a new game mode developed to be a bridge between players and raids. If you don't know, strike missions were basically just sort of like simplified one boss encounters instead of like multi-boss large raids. Um, 
Yeah, you. I think the way it works, I mean, it works like this in Final Fantasy, but you just enter a room and the boss is right there in front of you. And then you just, you play it. And if you lose, then you're right there again and you get to start again. You don't have to run through like a bunch of mobs to get to the, you know, the end boss or whatever. And personally, I There's actually no wing. really like strike missions. So I was actually a little bit disappointed that um, the strike missions were getting replaced with a raid um, in this expansion. When I first saw that, like, I'm... Um, Definitely keen for a new raid, but I actually there is a soft spot spot in my heart for strike missions there. Also keep in mind guys. I know that you guys here in chat that are here um, You know most of you that are here know these things But people that watch my videos the people I'm actually targeting like new people new players They don't know these things. That's why I explain What like what I can from my experiences to them? So people that are here I'm sure most of you like you know like how all this works but the thing is we're recording and the people that watch some of them don't they are quite fun to me we'll see we'll have to see how this raid goes this raid is gonna have to replace strike missions for me um so it's gonna have to be pretty good you never done so, a raid yeah, just basically they're saying this maybe i'll change your mind dude is that bridge in the when i do them. we're just giving them the raid content from the start in the form those interested in really want it. So the 10 man and the 50 man um, variants. So they do say here that the, uh, the, 10 inst the, the 10 man, the raid is gonna be more mechanics heavy, which is pretty cool. And then the players who prefer a large scale open world experience with fewer barriers to entry can also experience that content that way, which is gonna be the convergence. Meanwhile, integrating raid content into the story let us fit its development into our annual release schedule, obviously. Um, we're you know, I feel like you said that you haven't done raids. I feel like a lot of people in Guild Wars 2 probably haven't done raids. And um, I feel like it's because a lot of people that are playing this are like a little bit on the older side. And I mean, there's some younger people too. But like, you know, you're over the age of like 35 or I mean, I'm not, but. You know what I mean? Uh, like 30, I'm 33. So um, some of these people I don't think also are like very, like you're social in game, but it's different because you kind of like choose your battles, uh, like when you're going to talk and when you're, when you're not going to talk. And I feel like in Guild Wars, raids probably don't do well because most people like they don't, unless you're like a hardcore, most people are casual in this game. So they don't really want to take the time to form a, a 10 player group and socialize with all these people. They don't really know. Um, not that they're not like, they're not that they're not like social, but again, they don't really want to be like usually in like a 10 player raid that can start to get a little bit um, like, uh, let's see, what's the word. It's uh, not like hostile. It gets like more tense, I guess when you're doing these things. Um, and I think a lot of players, like a lot of people are just trying to play the game. Hey, Harley. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people are just trying to come in and play the game and they're not trying to get worked up and do like when I'm doing this Halloween thing, like doing, um, the, the clock tower on the timed. I love doing that, but it's actually like such a tense moment for me that it's almost like I can only do it so many times before I just want to go play. And I feel like a lot of raids are kind of like that too. And most people just don't want to do them because it takes so long to get people up and, and, and get, you know, what you need in the raid and everything. And everyone needs to be there. So that's just my view yeah, on the it. The annual expansion. So they have to be able to fit it into there. We aim to extend story assets to support raids and gauge players reactions to raids that have been integrated into the story. Um, so the raids are going to be more mechanics heavy. It seems. They're going to be, cool. uh, the story is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more heroic, whatever that means. Uh, focus on the enemies more than the NPCs. And sometimes they're going to have a challenge mode. In November, it's challenge mode will be uh, available after that as well. So challenge mode, not on release, but just a little bit after. That is pretty standard just so they can flat iron out any bugs and stuff like that. Dude, and they're going to have two different modes? In the 10 player raid. So what, challenge mode's like hard mode and then legendary is what? I thought there would just be a challenge mode and that's it. Can anticipate a legendary challenge mode. So we have known that it's going to have a legendary challenge mode. 
but this is the first time we have actually got the confirmation that it will come with it, if i ever wanted a title in the game it'll be this one this is the title we go for another purple title so that's pretty cool um basically with the previous uh, expansion secrets of the obscure we got our first legendary challenge mode um, which was essentially the hardest content in the game and the people who were able to uh, complete that were given the first ever purple title legendary conqueror of Ceres um, and that has been the one and only purple title for, for quite some time it looks like we may be getting a new one of these with each expansion um, if this pattern continues um, I was kind of wondering if if we were going to get like a new color for each one I was actually kind of hoping that wouldn't be the case because you know that's just gonna there's just gonna be so no many yeah don't do in that no time at all and then it's gonna get rid of the you know the cool factor of the purple the, the colored titles I think I like this I like no, how they're just all keep purple like keep all the purple. PVE related ones I like purple, purple, so it works out for there me. There is a part of me as well that's kind of like, oh, well, the purple used to be kind of associated with Ceres, uh, and now it's going to be just kind of associated with, you know, just legendary challenge modes in, in general, um, which is fine, but <laughs> it's just like the people, yeah, the, you know, it's the, the Ceres title is losing something. It's losing the fact that it's the unique only purple title in the game. Now there's going to be two. But, you know, this is pretty cool. And I'm wondering, oh, well. it's, well, time will tell, what is this next title going to be called? Legendary Conqueror of Titans, who knows? I mean, what color would it be I anyway? A screenshot here Orange or something? From the same Orange would look ugly, I like purple. Map. And we've got this interesting crater here, and this looks like it is going to be somewhat uh, related to the Titans, I think. Um, just these rocky shards, they kind of look like those Titans that we've seen a little bit so far. This looks like an impact site to me. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but it look, kind of looks like a crater, right? Like a meteoric impact uh -huh. site. Like, uh, I don't. Like, I wouldn't say a meteor now. From Maybe. Or something. Where's the meteor so, though? I wonder what the uh, story is behind that. Uh, and now we've got some information on the convergences. So this is kind of this is quite interesting. We're, You're I feel uh, like we're fighting there. We're gonna fight in this area on on how convergences are going to be going forwards so how they differ from the ones that we've got uh, from secrets of the maybe Obscure. not actually maybe is that's it? where we is there a waypoint in there maybe i can't tell if that well, is there's a, there's a couple of things that are staying the same so the code and cubs huddle closely around the villagers claw which uh from a previous blog post we were told that the claw is like uh sort of like the leader of the village um, their eyes wide with awe and excitement as he begins to recount a harrowing tale. It's a story of bravery and strategy in which a band of 50 fearless Tyrians embarked on a daring mission as they ascended the mountain. So that's us, I assume. 50 Tyrians, 50 fearless Tyrians. That's the 50 people in the Convergence. Um, so it seems mm -hmm. like it's going to be like a story. Like us, yeah. the, the village elder is like recounting a story. <laughs> To the code and cubs um, about us i suppose uh, the tale unfolds uh, as you take up the challenge in this encounter you will you will find a strong ally in your war claw mount which will aid in this new adventure so it's uh, going to involve the war claw mount heavily by the sounds of this i don't know if that's good or bad i'm a little worried that we might have to i'll have that jump on our mounts and you know spam one ability or something not a fan of that but hopefully they've found a way to kind of make it a bit more interesting the the mounted combat gameplay yeah that would be bad that's bad um, gameplay yeah, don't, don't premise, i already so did that like, with zaitan dude we're going to be like performing we're supposed to be going up now it's being told like we're like live reenacting the story or something like that it sounds uh, like an interesting concept Listen closely as the village's claw weaves the narrative. Each encounter promises unexpected challenges and thrilling surprises. So perhaps we're going to get like, it sounds like we might, uh, we might want to turn that dialogue up. Maybe he's going to give you some cryptic hints on uh, how to complete difficult parts of the convergence, perhaps. During your encounters with these enemies, you might observe a noticeable shift in difficulty. 
Now, they this always say this. That, uh, I think a lot of people are going to be quite interested in. Compared to what you've experienced in Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure, it's going to be harder. We've fine-tuned those uh, these bosses to present a more advanced challenge than in previous convergences, necessitating coordinated efforts from all party members to secure victory. No more leeching in convergences. So it sounds like they, uh, they've taken some of the feedback uh, from the previous convergences and Secrets of the Obscure. Oh, I'll, which, I'll um, get it through the story. You know, okay, I'm good then. Any of those, you, you'll, dis you'll discover that there is a, a, quite a few people who leech them, um, and it also can sometimes get pretty bad, where it uh, results in, in failure. But it's only because they're, I feel like it's only because they kind of can be leached. You know, they're, they're a little bit, little bit simple. Um, and the challenge modes of the convergence has definitely helped that. But it looks like from the sounds of this, even just the standard, the normal convergences are going to be a little bit more difficult than the secrets of the obscure ones, which I think is pretty good. That sounds, um, sounds promising. Completing convergences in Guild Wars 2 Janthea Wilds will award players with essences that can be used to craft legendary gear. And yes, these essences will be compatible with the legendary obsidian armor, which was available in Sodo, as well as the new legendary mm -hmm. spear and legendary backpack that we're getting um, with the uh, following updates. Legendary backpack. So this is um, a pretty pretty interesting uh, piece of information as well. So the essences that we've got, uh, pretty interesting. What did it say it was going to get renamed to? As well. So the essence, Rift essences. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting uh, piece of information as well. So the essences that we've got uh, in the Secrets of the Obscure, these um, tier 1, 2, and 3 essences are called essences of despair, greed, and triumph, respectively. It's a little bit like convoluted like just the weird strange names of them i kind of found myself kind of hoping that they would rename them but it, it sounds like these are going to be different essences that are going to be compatible with these just the way that this is worded it, that's what it sounds like to me so you're going to get a separate type of essences um, and these are just going to be called like standardized they're just going to be called rift essences mm but they're going to be compatible, basically perform the same role as these Soto essences that we've got. Which is kind of like... I'm not sure if that's actually making it more convoluted or not, but at least uh, at least it's... I think what they're doing is they're just going to make things... Like, they're putting, they're putting these also, like, in the newer content that's out, and it's probably going to be, like, easier now to get your legendaries. That's probably that's probably what's going to happen. Um, giving us more options of content to do to complete any of these um, legendaries. Like uh, if you're working on your obsidian armor now, um, when this comes out, you're going to have a, an extra option of content. Because the, the nice thing is, you're going to have. I mean, I haven't played this yet, but you're going to have a stockpile from this, and then if you if you move on to the next expansion, now you can hold on to that stockpile of essence that you've gathered from this expansion. And you can combine it with your Janther Wilds uh, essence that you're getting from there as well, and use it for your legendaries. I and and then I think these are probably these these are probably going to be a lot easier to get. You're probably going to get more of them or something. It's probably going to be like boosted compared to the old method. I feel like that's usually what happens when they do this stuff. To play in order to to work in other that, games. That you know, for example, I did not have when I was getting my uh, obsidian armor. Um, I'm not sure if the Soto essences are going to be also compatible in the other direction. Like if these secrets of the obscure essences are going to be able they're to, just renaming to it. Yeah. the new spear and the new backpack. I'm not too sure about that. It doesn't really say. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see, but it kind of sounds like maybe not. And to be honest, I kind of hope that is the case. Um, you know, I kind of want a brand new grind um, to go after with, with the new legendary spear and the new backpack. I'm probably not going to be getting the backpack. I've already got a legendary backpack. But with the new spear, <laughs> I kind of hope that it's not going to be... I can't just use essences on that too. I hope it's something new, to be honest. But yeah, that is quite interesting. Bit of, uh, bit of information there. I definitely wasn't expecting that. We hope you enjoyed hearing 
about some of the post-launch content coming to Guild Wars 2 Janthea Wilds. We'll see you in tier. This is the second time they've mentioned that this is not coming on launch. I think they're yeah. very clear uh, that this is not something. That well, yeah, really you, that's a great to idea to too to, to put that in there. The, <laughs> to let them know this is not what they're getting. The convergences and the raids are coming on the first quarterly update after the initial expansion launch. Um, so there you go. That is the news. Let me know what you reckon down below. What do you reckon about the uh, the first little dripplings of information we've got about the new raid wing? What do you reckon about this as well? The uh, the sort of new essences from convergences. Does that sound more convoluted to you? Or you know what? Essences from convergences will be renamed rift essences. Rift essences. That's what mm -hmm. these are. These are Rift. Like, I got these from Rifts. Right. Convergences. So maybe yeah. it is just renaming these. Maybe we're not going to get two different versions. Yeah. I guess we'll have to no. see. I'm not 100% sure. They're going to rename them. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, gamers. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Like and so. That's what he meant. Dead Man Mode is RuneScape's most intense. It just keeps Either. playing like new stuff, man. That's not that's not my video, man. I mean, this isn't my video either, but this is the one that I was watching, not the other one. Um, yeah, uh, I'm curious though, guys. Like, if you guys think that maybe I should do some things like this. Um, my news, I plan to do like a news um, thing because it's like every week or something, right? That they come out with these, that the they come out with these like news updates and stuff. It's kind of like RuneScape, like where, where they have like weekly patches where they go and talk about things. So. I was thinking about doing something like this like every single week because it's an easy weekly video and I'm up at that time probably like when they when they send it out and I, um it wouldn't be like this I like maybe to start out I might actually like read it kind of like he did and then go into like what I'm talking about um like in my head uh, I guess and uh yeah, I was just thinking about doing it differently. But the reason why I clicked on this guy's video is because he's like the only one that I could really find for the Janther Wilds like new raid. I didn't I can't find this anywhere. And uh this is the only one that I could see. I've seen the post and it's saying that it's, it's coming in November, but a lot of people were telling me while I was playing the game it wasn't coming until like January or like February or even March. Um, so I don't know like how true, like all that is, but from what, what I can tell it's coming soon, like less than a month and I can't really find anything on it. So, um, in that vein, that's kind of why I was thinking maybe I should start getting into like the news scene and just start looking at it like right when they drop and then just hit the record button and see what happens. But I'm curious what you guys think about that. So you can just let me know.